of secret line Like leaves we soar so high So they put the plastic and stuff over it so water don't go in there. Yeah. You want to turn it? Yeah, that's it. And one five five. That's the one four. Lift it up. Just a bit there. And one one five, yeah. Okay. Wow. Alrighty, so we're at the gravesite, so we just came to look at it because Churchill's told us that they set up the tent already. So we just came to check it, and yeah, the tent and chairs are set up, and yeah, it looks really pretty out here. Like, as crazy as it is, like being a gravesite, it's so beautiful the amount of flowers and floral arrangements and stuff out here. It's kind of really nice to see. Like, it looks so like beautiful, honest to God. Like, I took some um, videos, but I don't know, it's so heartwarming to see the love out here. Like, it's so much flowers and stuff. Oh. And this is so cool because then it's like, as we said, like when we visit her, we can bring, you know, flowers and yearly and, you know, just different occasions and stuff. So, yeah. so now we're going to go look for mom. And what I really like about this cemetery is there's so much people here that I know. So like my nephew Kikala is here. My uncle slash cousin Errol is buried here. Our good friend Maxwell. When did Max die? Like two, two, three years ago? Three? Before COVID. Before COVID, our friend Maxwell, our good friend Maxwell love him dearly you know he was buried here as well so it's just kind of like when we come here we can actually do quite a few visits and it's just so heartwarming to know that like your loved ones are kind of together if that makes sense so so yeah so we're at churchill's funeral home they recommended that we start by the day before the funeral so that we could you know just pay our respects to mom obviously tomorrow at the funeral we're going to do that but since they already have her um dressed and in the casket they just you know recommended or suggested that we stop by so that's what we're doing now Alrighty, so I just thought it'd make sense for me to come back and update you about the funeral home. So the last time we spoke, I mentioned that we we're having a bit of issues, but we we're just trying to push through. We got approval, so we we're so thankful, so grateful. So let me update you. Monday, I gave them a call to find out, hey, do you know what flight or when she'll be coming? The lady says to me, yeah, she'll be on the Wednesday flight. So I said, oh, okay, well, you know, did you let the funeral home know? And she said, yeah, we emailed them directly. We just didn't copy you guys. And I was like, oh, okay. So I said, well, do you have the airway bill number? Because the funeral home in Cayman told me that they required that for customs. She said, no, we don't have that yet, but we should have that tomorrow on Tuesday. So I said, okay, then, thanks. So call Tuesday morning now, ask for the airway bill number. Then she puts me on hold and she says, no, you won't receive the airway bill number until Wednesday morning. So I said, oh, okay, well, is that going to be an issue for customs for us? She said, no, that's normally how it goes. So I said, okay, then she's like, yeah, but, you know, she just has to be at the airport by 7 a.m. We'll have her there ready to go by 7 a.m. at the airport. So, because she's coming on a Wednesday flight. I said, okay, no props, thanks. So I said, okay, so is that it for us? Like, is there anything else, you know, because... In fairness, every time Kurt emails her, he normally says to her, Hi, could you provide us with an updated invoice? Because we paid a deposit of 3000 So we're not sure like where it got allocated and how much things were. So we just want to know, you know, what's the balance? Do they owe us money? Do we owe them money, right? Okay, nothing. She said, nope, all good. So that was Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon now, I get an email. Well, Kurt gets an email. And she kind of slided us on the email, but we'll ignore that. She didn't address Kurt. She only addressed his brother. And it was like, okay, well, it's two of us, but alrighty. She emails Tuesday afternoon, after I spoke to her in the morning now, and says, please see attached final bill to be settled. 
So she sends an invoice for $1,341, right? Okay, this is Tuesday afternoon. Wire cut off at the banks is, I think, 11 a.m. Like, you have to have it submitted. Probably by 10.59, not even 11, by 10.59, right? Okay, for same-day wire for it to be approved. Why is she sending us an invoice Tuesday afternoon? Anyways, when Kurt showed me, I just rolled my eyes. and like, okay, we'll set that tomorrow because the bank cut off is gone. Alrighty, I didn't call her back or email her or anything because she didn't address us. And she just sent the invoice. Wednesday morning, though. I'm at work and I get a text from Kurt. When you think it can't get any worse, it got worse. I get a text from Kurt and he says, they didn't ship mom. So I message like, wait, what? What do you mean they didn't ship mom? Give him a quick call because I was in shock. Like, what do you mean they didn't send mom? Because this is Wednesday morning now. You know, we're anxious because we know she's coming up on a Wednesday flight. So, you know, we're just a bit nervous. And we're like, okay, you know, butterflies because we're like, okay, we hope everything goes well. And honestly, when I saw the invoice on Tuesday... I didn't want to pay because I was like, I want to make sure mom is here first because when I tell you it's been so much up and down and promises not fulfilled, so much calls, emails, just to try and get this process start sorted. Just to try and get this process started. So I didn't want to pay the invoice. I'm be honest with you. I was like, nah, she I'll wait till tomorrow to get that invoice paid because I've been asking her. Okay, call Kurt. Now Kurt says, yeah, they apparently said that we have to settle the invoice before they send mom. Excuse me? We've already paid 3000 USD, right? Without a proper invoice. And we've asked for the balance. And you're really not going to send mom because we didn't pay this invoice that you just sent us yesterday afternoon before? Like, what? And bank cutoff is 11, so we couldn't even pay it yesterday for you to receive it. And it's come from Cayman to Jamaica, excuse me? So I went into one office and I gave her a call. And so... I was trying to be pleasant and I was really trying to be pleasant this whole time. I'll be honest with you. I was just straight with her. I was like, um, excuse me. What's this? My husband's telling me that you didn't send his mom because the invoice wasn't paid. I said, I've been asking you every day for the final invoice if there was one. And I said, up to yesterday, you said everything was good. And I said, like, you sent us an invoice in the afternoon. Bank cut off is 11. She said, no, 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 no. She's on the plane. She's on the plane. We sent her. She's on the plane. It's my fault. It's my fault. So she was saying that what happened was because she switched laptops, she thought thought she sent us this invoice from last week right before all of this so she thought she sent us this invoice last week and it's just yesterday afternoon that she realized it was still in her outbox and it wasn't sent so the whole time i'm just going off and i'm like good god no like we sent you three thousand already like you just sent us this invoice of course we're gonna pay this invoice she's like no she's on the plane i told him she's on the plane so i don't know where the miscommunication was that she was that you know mom wasn't on the plane but she, when i started she started apologizing and saying no 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 she's on the plane she's on the plane because i was just explaining to her, like this is a very sensitive situation situation you can't you know be messing with people's emotions like this you know over an invoice that you just sent so she apologized but when I tell you I was just so I was so fed up with this whole process as you know and mm, that I just had to let her have it I wasn't rude but I was just asking her like excuse me why would you do that so anyways long story short thank the lord mom was on the flight mom came the wednesday morning thank you jesus and all is well and we will have the funeral on april 6th so thank god but yeah that was just the final end to the story so after that after i got off the phone with her because i said to her i was like i can do your invoice right now it's not going to clear so anyways long story short we paid them we emailed them and we were still polite when we sent the email to her but yeah that's all started and i pray we never have to work at that funeral home again because it was one of the worst experiences of my life it was horrible like the professionalism just was not there and honestly i don't know what it is but you can't how can i put it basically what we required from them could have been started in two days and it took us over a week and we had to send so much emails and make so much calls just to get the runner on so it was a process i'm just so thankful for churchill's funeral home in cayman because they really helped to make this this process easy because whoo what we went through with jamaica funeral home ooh, mm -mm, mm -mm. i i pray i never have to use them again but we're just thankful mom is here so yeah Yeah, I'm not going to start it now. <laughs> we got the goods! I'm so excited! Alrighty, so Kurt and I, we just picked up some cassava cake and some mini strawberry cheesecakes for my good friend Sunita. She has a company called Cake Smith & Co. So I'll insert her Instagram below. 
but she has the best cassava cake that I've ever had and I've had a bunch of cassava cake and I can say hers is the best so I'm so excited because it was supposed to be ready tomorrow morning and thank god she did it early for us so we could get it this evening so that tomorrow you know while we're busy we don't have to go collect from her we can have it ready and just head to the funeral so I'm so thankful so happy as well as I was supposed to do a reading tomorrow and I was just a bit worried you know just with a lot of things like whether I'd be able to do it and my good friend Markeisha she came through and she told me that she'd be honored to do the reading for me so I don't have to do it tomorrow so I'm just so thankful I just feel so blessed and I just really appreciate good people and good company good friends I don't know I'm just a little emotional I'm just so thankful so ready and I were heading to a quick dinner we're not too hungry because we had some food earlier but I really wanted a pina colada and we just want to like chill and debrief before tomorrow so I'm so excited so we're just heading to Morgan's and it's almost nine so I feel like we should be able to get a good spot so yeah and I really like their desserts so let's go so the parking lot is full like we can get parking it's 9 20 right now so we'll see if we can even get through we didn't make a reservation i was thinking nine you know it won't be too busy but it's friday night so i should have known so let's see if we can get through sounds like a party up in here oh they're closed Uh, as suspected, they're actually closed. I thought they were just full because when we went out there, like the music is really popular. I was like, whoa, the music's really loud. They're closed for a private function. It's some wedding reception going on right now. So we drove all this way for nothing. So yeah, I just felt for Pina Colada and just to chill and debrief. So we'll see where we go from here. We might just head back home. <laughs> Starlight sky, our love secret love. Alrighty, so we ended up at the Fall Steakhouse. Thank God Kurt suggested it because I love their pina coladas. And it was awesome. So we're heading home now. But thank God. Um, it's crazy how it worked out. That other place was closed because they had a private function. And then we came to the falls and we actually got through in record time. Babe, what time did we get here? Like we're probably here nine forty. Nine forty and it's ten twenty six and we feel full. We had great service. So yeah, we're heading home. This rooster. Suppose when I got in the car, I'd woke him up. Sure. Huh? I'm boxing. Look at this rooster on the AC sleeping. It's almost 9 a.m., so we'll be good on time. So we're just getting ready to go now. Enjoying our time together. Whenever we'd walk to the front of the yard to close the gate, we would 
any kids to have a foot race with us to the back of the yard. He would immediately say no, and then proceed to quickly walk ahead of us, only to take off running and laughing. <laughs> Your care was so all-encompassing that whenever you want something, you'd always buy two, just so Carla and I could have one each. You loved us with all you had and did a wonderful job. No matter how tough things were, you made sure we were all right. No, that doesn't mean that we never got on mom's nerves. And whenever we did, she would say, if I lick you, say boy, you say Blinky. <laughs> For those who may not know, Blinkies are fireflies. <laughs> I remember one evening, you were making dinner and I was determined to go outside and play cricket. You told me not to bother because dinner was almost ready. Nonetheless, I snuck outside with my bottom ball. Not too long after I started playing, I hit the ball towards the house and broke one of the windows. You stared at me from inside the house and I stared back like a deer in headlights. <laughs> you told me to come inside right now, but I refused, knowing I'd be spanked. <laughs> He then said to me, you can stay there, you have to come inside at some point, because it's getting dark. Of course, I eventually came inside, and of course I received my spanking, and then you sent me to go and eat my dinner. You treated everyone kindly and with respect, and taught us to do the same. You were dependable and supportive of others. I remember people in the neighborhood would come to you when they needed someone to talk to or needed some help, and you'd always gracefully assist them. I'd really see you get upset, and whenever you did, you'd always say, you know what, let's make it fun, or God not sleep. Then you'd go back to being your usual calm self. You'd always tell us to be good boys. I pray that one day, I'll have the opportunity to show your love and care to my own children. Words can't express how much you are missed and loved. I wish you were still here with us, but I take comfort in knowing that you're in a better place, free from all the aches and pains. Your memory will be with us for a time and will be always cherished. Until we meet again, Mommy. I love you. This is a reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alrighty, service was beautiful, so we're just heading to the grave site now. So yeah, it was beautiful. Baby, your tribute was so beautiful. I didn't get anything. Say hey to Jay, event planner. She set up the whole food by herself with the guy from Wellies. Alrighty, so we're just at Church Hills right now. We're just waiting on Mr. Will. They had another funeral to go to after ours today. So we just um, got him some food and we have a card for him, like a little token of appreciation for just all his hard work. When I say 
Churchill has just made this day so remarkable. Their service is just exceptional. So yeah, so he had another funeral. I think East End he went, I think. So they're on their way back. Now I think he said um, 20 minutes. So Kurt and I were just out here waiting for him. We had to head home to get something for Aunt Liz. So we're just gonna drop the stuff off to him and then head back to the hotel. I don't think we're doing much tonight. We'll see what Aunt Liz and them are up to, but I don't think we're doing much tonight. And we had so much leftover food from today. I wish I got some footage of the food. My camera died at the grave site and I forgot to get my camera back from mom and switch batteries. But yeah, we had so much food catered by Wellies that tasted so delicious, right boo? Oh, he's yawning. <laughs> but the food tasted so delicious and I wish I could have just shown the setup. And rice and peas, white rice, curry chicken, fried chicken, fried fish, brown stew fish. No, I think it was brown stew fish, not fried fish. Brown stew fish, um, oxtail, cassava cake. Ooh! Cassava cake, baby. Cheesecake. What else we had, baby? Mac salad, potato salad. We just had so much options and stuff, and it was really good. And we had penne cantadina from Casanova. They gave us so much. We had three containers full of penne cantadina. I'm like, whoa, whoa, this is a lot. But it was so good. So I wish we had some footage of that. But it was a really good event. And I'm just so thankful to the church, Reverend Mary, Father Jerome, Bobza. Um, Sister Annalise. I'm also so thankful to my family too because they really stepped up and you know like helped arrange the hall and then helped clear up. So that just shows like you know the love that they have for Kurt and me. So I really appreciate Uncle Dwayne, Uncle Dwayne, Papi, Mom, Bobza, Jay. Joanna left the um, service early just to help set up the hall and make sure she was there for when Wellies and Casanova delivered and we just really appreciate that. So I just want to say like you know a big thank you to them. But yeah so uh, I don't think we will get up to much more tonight. I think it'll probably be tomorrow that I'll see you when we have breakfast. I'm hoping we can have breakfast with Aunt Liz, Patrick, and Major Brown tomorrow. So we'll see. So this is my outfit. But yeah, let's go. We're gonna drop Major Brown to church. She's going to Emsley and it starts at 10.30 and it's 10.15. 10, 10 so we're late, we actually need to get downstairs. And then with Aunt Liz, I think we're gonna get some more souvenirs for them. So we're gonna just pick up some stuff and then we'll see where the day takes us. <laughs> we're going to dinner at Casanova, so we're going to go get the farm now and then we're going to head out. Beneath the starlit sky 